Hello, this is Mike from ZSA, here to take you on a brief overview of how to control your ZSA keyboard's lighting. Today I'm going to be using an Ergodox Easy Glow for this example, but this will work just as well on an Ergodox Easy Shine, a Plank Easy Glow, or a Moonlander as well. We're starting off here in live training, where we'll go over the board's basic built-in lighting controls. So we're here on the base layer, and you can see there aren't any lighting related controls here. Instead, I have to go ahead and toggle into my my first layer, my symbols layer here. And then you can see all these yellow keys here are related to lighting. The first one we're gonna take a look at is just how to turn the lighting on and off, which is this toggle lighting key here. So if I go ahead and I press that key on my Ergodox EZ, you see the lighting turns on and off again, pretty simple. Next, you can see there's this nice RGB animation playing through the board right now. And that's nice, but what if I want a different animation? Well, there's a few that come built into the board, so I can cycle through those by hitting the switch animation key. So if I do that, you can see that there's a few different rainbow ones. If we continue on through here, some are a little bit more vibrant and like exciting, <laughs> and some are a little bit more laid back. We haven't gotten to those ones just yet though. So if we go on through here, you can see there's different rainbow ones. This one has a lot of different keys and a lot of different colors. And then this one's one of my favorites. I use this one pretty frequently on my own boards. And it's where you have a set color and it just kind of like fades back and forth across a couple different hues of that color. It's pretty relaxing. I like this one. After that switch animations key, let's say we want to turn the brightness up or down. To do that, we have both brightness up and brightness down key. So if I go ahead and tap that brightness down key a few times, you can see the board's going to get dimmer and dimmer and basically go out there. And if I keep pressing brightness plus, it'll get bright again. <laughs> Does what it says on the tin. After that, we have another couple cool keys over here, which is uh, hue plus and hue minus. And what these do is, especially when we're set to a, an animation like this, where it has one particular color it's showcasing, if I tap the hue plus and minus keys, you'll see it'll get a little more pink. Let me get to some reds. It's gonna cycle through basically a color wheel. So we have yellow now, then kind of a blue, and we're back to purple, which is what I usually have mine at. So. You can see you can cycle through those pretty easily with those hue plus and minus keys. Nice. The last few keys I want to showcase here for now are going to be these three keys, which are called set color keys. You can basically program in a color there. And when you tap that button, it's going to turn the whole board that single color. So if I tap this one here, you can see the whole board is green. It's kind of a faint green there. I have a, I have a light up here, which is making it a little bit hard to see that one. If I tap that key, you can see it's all yellow. And if I tap this one, you can see it's all blue. So you can set the whole board to a specific color there. I think I want mine to show that rainbow animation again though. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through here until we get to that rainbow animation. Okay, cool. Now let's say I wanna do something a little bit more with my lighting. Um, I like having this animation here when I'm typing maybe, but when I switch over to the symbols layer, maybe I wanna be able to see where these number keys are. That's something that's really nice about our keyboards is you can put a number pad right underneath your right hand. You don't have to have a separate one off on another keyboard or anything like that. But it means that it's on a different layer and it can be kind of hard to tell exactly where those keys are when you're first getting started, when you're still working on that muscle memory. So let's say I wanna light just these keys up here to show where that number pad is. Or let's say if I go over to this media layer, our other layer here, Let's say whenever I'm on this media layer, I don't want to ever accidentally hit that reset button in the top right. So maybe I want this, this layer to be really visible when I'm in there. I want to always know when I'm in the reset layer. Well, to do that, we're going to be using a different mode. So far, we've just been using what's called manual mode, which is the board's built-in animations and lighting that are controlled directly on the board itself. But if we want to program in specific layers or specific keys to light up a certain way, then we're going to use a different mode called per key or per layer colors. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start by modifying our layout. So from live training, I'm going to go over to the default layouts here, go down to the Ergodox EZs, and I can go ahead and I can start modifying it. I'm gonna hit this modify layout button in the bottom right so we can start making our changes here. We're gonna start with the, uh, the media layer. Remember I said I wanted this layer to always light up a bright color so I could tell when I was on it. I didn't wanna ever accidentally be on the reset layer when I didn't mean to. So I'm gonna go ahead and here, click in the top right here to set colors for this layer. And from this color picker, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a bright red. That way, Whenever I'm on this layer, the whole board is gonna glow red, and so I'll know that I'm on that reset layer. I won't hopefully, or on that media layer, and I hopefully won't accidentally hit the reset button. <laughs> now for that symbols layer, like I said, I wanna light up these number pad keys, so I have a little bit of an easier time seeing where my numbers are. And so I'm, to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on a key, 
and then click set color. And when I do that, I can go ahead and I can scrub through the different color shades. Let's say I want like a bright green, monstrous green, green juice. You can see Oryx gives some fun names for these as we cycle through here. What do I want? Picaro green. We'll go with Picaro green. So I'm going to use Picaro green for my number pad key. So I've assigned it to that first key, the seven. But when I click on this eight and I click set color, you can see the first color from this color picker is going to be our most recent choice. So Picaro green. So I can click on that again. And I'll just really quickly go through here and assign those to all of our number pad. Shouldn't take too long. This can be really useful, not just for highlighting like a number pad, but you could light up the number row if you wanted to see where the number row was. You could light up, light up specific shortcuts in different colors to help you tell the difference between the different kinds of shortcuts you have set up. The sky's the limit for how you want to use this stuff to organize your layout. Okay. And now that I've gone ahead and I've set those per key colors on this layer and those per layer colors on this layer here, I'm going to go ahead and name our layout. And we'll, uh, we'll flash it, see how this stuff works. So I'm going to name it lights, pretty simple, compile it. One thing that's worth noting here is that the Ergodox Easy Shine doesn't support per key colors because it has a kind of a, a back light bar instead of lights underneath individual keys. So it can just use per layer colors like this red one we have on our, uh, on our media layer here. Whereas all of our other boards, the Plank Easy Glow, the Moonlander, the Ergodox Easy Glow, they all support per key lighting because they have individual RGB keys or yeah, individual RGB lights under the keys. Okay. Now that it's done compiling, I'm going to save it to my keyboard. So I need to go ahead and grab my paper clip here. I'm going to click the reset pinhole there and click connect. And we'll go ahead and flash that to our, our keyboard. All right. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and head back over to live training so that we can see what's going on here now that we've assigned some of those per key and per layer colors. Okay, so we're back in live training. The first thing you might notice is that on our base layer, it still has that manual mode RGB animation. But if I go ahead and I switch over to my symbols mode, you can see now it just has those green keys on my number pad. But there's not an animation on the rest of the board here or anything like that. I switch back out of it and we're back to manual mode again. This is because we didn't assign any per layer or per key colors on the base layer. And those per key and per layer colors will overwrite or kind of take precedence over the manual mode when they're assigned. So if I hold down that key to access my media layer, you can see it glows bright red. And if I let go, we're back to the manual modes animation again. This is nice. It means that I can still have that nice RGB animation on my base layer when I'm typing. It's nice and pretty. Or I can go ahead and I can toggle in and have just those green keys for my number pad or those red keys to let me know, look out, you're on the, you're on the media layer. Don't accidentally hit that reset button. <laughs> Something like that. What this also means is that we can actually toggle these two modes on and off independently of one another. So if I go ahead and I switch back to my symbols layer again, we have a couple different keys here that are going to be relevant. So the first one is going to be that toggle lighting key. If you remember, that one will toggle on and off our manual mode lighting. So if I go ahead and I hit that button and I switch back to the base layer, you can see our keys are all black because I turned off that manual mode. But if I switch to my symbols layer, those green keys still light up. Same thing with my reset layer. So I've turned off manual mode, but not the per key per layer color mode, which is nice. That means I can have a pretty low key base layer if I want, and then I can switch onto other layers and have specific things light up. Very cool. You can also toggle on and off the per layer colors using the toggle layer colors key. This one's just going to turn those individual keys. You can see my number pad lighting up on and off, just like that. So you can toggle on and off the per layer colors with that toggle layer colors key, and you can turn on and off those manual mode animations with the toggle lighting key. Two separate ways of doing things there. All right. If you have any questions about any of this, we have some posts on our blog that can help a bit, but you can also always write into us at contact at zsa.io anytime. We're always happy to help with layout questions. Thanks for listening. Cheers and bye-bye.